Hello there, everybody. Welcome to Movies Are Real for the month of February 2024. I am George, as always. Uh, what's a Valentine's Day joke? Uh, I, I am drunk with love for movies. Hey, Ryan Lance, what's up? How's it going? I, I hate movies. Oh, well, this is going to be an awkward an hour and a half. I know. I've never seen one, actually. Mm -mm -mm. We had a bit... What was the movie that... Last podcast, we said a bit, like, what if this was the first movie you saw? I think it was Our Guy. We said, Probably like, what? Our guy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's like, whoa! <laughs> this is bad. What... <laughs> this is what people have been talking about. We should stop. Uh, <laughs> Carrie, what's up? Uh, uh... <laughs> Argyle. Oh, no. <laughs> a movie we already talked about. <laughs> so, uh, yes, hello there, everyone. Welcome to the episode for February of Argyle, a movie we talked about last episode because, friends, if we would have waited until now, there's not a chance in hell anyone would remember it. Uh, I'm surprised <laughs> if that movie, once that movie comes to Apple TV, they should just call it Kingsman Argyle or something. Just so yeah. somebody clicks on it. <laughs> I, I, I think that'll probably happen. Just like happen. dead reckoning it, sort of, uh, yeah. I do have an Argyle update, actually. Oh, great. Wow. <laughs> I was at Barnes and Noble and I was in the new release section and there was the novelization that shows up at the end of the book. It was there. Oh, it the was book? like the Argyle book was there oh, yeah. at the bookstore. I was I, like, what? I heard the <laughs> I heard this weird conspiracy that like the book came out. It's also full of like typos and like and it's like also oh, not good, not good because I guess it was written and there was a weird conspiracy theory that like Taylor Swift wrote it. Yeah, oh, I saw okay. that conspiracy. That's theory. all I know. I saw a conspiracy that J.K. Rowling wrote it, and I was like, ooh. <laughs> I mean, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> judging by like how the book how sounds, <laughs> judging by how the book sounds in the movie, I can one hundred percent see that. As but, yeah, you so that's my Argyle update. It was very jarring to see that book cover on a shelf in a store. I was like, yeah. oh, ew. You're, you're in the secret fourth ending right now <laughs> of that movie. Anyways, all right, guys. We got some we got some bangers here to talk about. Uh, speaking of bangers, the first movie here, Lisa Frankenstein. Woo. Directed by Zelda Williams, starring Catherine Newton, Cole Sprouse, uh, Carla Gugino as well. This is the... By Diablo Cody. Diablo Cody, yes. Uh, Jennifer's Body, body and Juno. Mm -hmm. And Ricky and the Flash. <laughs> Who could forget Ricky and the Flash? I, it's a, I've never seen that movie, but it's a heartbreaker. People tell me it is awful. <laughs> I saw it in theaters. I don't remember it being awful, but I probably wouldn't like it now if I watched mm -hmm. it. I have not revisited it in the last 10 years. Uh, so here we have uh, Catherine Newton, who you may know of from Freaky Fame, or what else is she in? She's an Ant Man and a Quas. Oh yeah, Quas she's the, the one. I, yeah. I hilariously found out that she's the girl in Paranormal Activity Four. Yes, <laughs> oh. she's the yeah. Also, she's, I think she's in that vampire ballerina movie yes, that's yes, coming she is. out. Yeah. So she, I think people, I think there is like you just got a face for horror, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's good at being Rise afraid up. looking. Yeah, Rise yeah, up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, so yes, this movie, Catherine Newton plays a, a, a lady who is like, you know, she's a, she's a little different. Uh, she likes to hang out in an abandoned cemetery and nobody, uh, like wants to be her friend. She's got a sister named, what? Well, she's got a Taffy? Taffy. Just like, like it's a Laffy bizarre, Taffy. it's a bizarre <laughs> name. Yes. Ta who's like, who's a cheerleader. He's extremely optimistic and super like, yay. And stereotypically, you know, in this role, this cheerleader, you know, stepsisters are mean, but she's super nice and supportive. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, and uh, oops, uh, the, the Cole Sprouse uh, comes back to life, and uh, they get up to some hijinks. Well, oh, um, yeah. So this is a, I would, it's kind of a coming of age movie, kind of a, a throwback, uh, sort of a. I, was Edward Scissorhands a throwback when it came out? I don't even know. Because <laughs> it's, because it's like a. But point being, we're like in this like weird like town where like eighties, yeah, eighties like yeah, style, like I weird idyllic, but <laughs> weirdo suburbia, weirdo <laughs> suburbia. That, that's what it is. Yes, uh, and then yes, Cole Sprouse comes back to the dead as a little zombie man, and uh, oops, and he's um, a little silly, little wacky, little wacky. <laughs> um, this movie's great. Mm -hmm. This movie's fantastic. Uh, I had, I mean, I wasn't worried. Uh, when I saw the trailers, uh, that it was like not gonna deliver. I, I, I remember going in last episode. I was like, I'm going to set my expectations like neutral because I don't want to get too excited. Um, because it seems completely my shit. But 
Yeah, this movie, uh, I think this movie's great, and I don't understand how it's uh, sitting at around 50% on Rotten Tomatoes and shit. I don't understand that. I don't get it. Like, That's I, crazy. I understand, like, this, because this did not do well in the box office. It's mm-hmm. already on digital, which is crazy how this is on digital at Argyle <laughs> is not. That is insane <laughs> to me. Um, but I just do not get wh- why the reviews and stuff are so low, like... It's just baffling to me. Is it is it all these like uppity critics who are like, mm, no, thank you, that's not cinema. But is it like, cringe? Do they think it's cringe? I don't understand. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. Carrie, what do you think of this film? I love it. It's my favorite movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I wouldn't be. I would be surprised if something dethrones this movie. For the rest of the year, I really love it. I on your third rewatch, I saw you you moved it to the five. I did, and I was like, <laughs> was and I was like okay, we're here, we're on this, it we're in this era. <laughs> but yeah, I love it. It's so funny. I think Lisa is such a great character because she's she's just a a zany weirdo, and she's kind of an asshole. It's just mm-hmm. hilarious, and she's just dealing with life a life that she feels is unfair, even though. There's some stuff that she could handle a little better, yeah. but she's just she's just doing her thing. Mm. And then uh, she gets a cute zombie boyfriend, kind of. Mm. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah. And we love that. Yes. Um, I think that's a... Like, I mean, it, sort of following the pattern of Jennifer's body is in that it seems like a movie written by Diablo Cody that uh, was not received well when it came out by mm-hmm. critics and financially bombs and then eventually becomes a cult classic that seems what the the path this movie is on i guess which i don't understand because it's just like all the signs are there i gave you all the clues detective <laughs> like this is clearly a movie that, i don't know it's like it's just it's got I, it is I what think, it is i, I think once this is once this is on a streaming service it'll that's like, something what's it'll, it'll, yeah. it'll absolutely blow up with like younger people for sure now um, that it's on, now that it's on digital I keep getting clips of it on TikTok, and I'm like, okay. "Oh, this yep. is great! Yep. This here is we go! Perfect. Yep, here we go! <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, this movie is fantastic. I wish my only complaint for this movie is that I wish it had more Carla Gugino. Uh, mm-hmm. Spoilers, I guess. Like Carla Gugino doesn't make doesn't have a lot of presence in this movie, <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's in it. Um, yeah, this movie is funny. It's uh, campy. It's it's a good time. I I love the style. Like it's so. Like, like, it has that suburbia style, but it also has, like, the animated intro stuff is very good. Yep. There's that, like, that dream sequence that feels very, like, 1930s Hollywood. Um, and it's just so, like, shot so, like, wonderful. And it's, like, this is Zelda Williams' first directorial debut for, yeah, like, a feature film is, like... Pretty good. Crazy, and it's, like... Like, when I saw, like, oh, Zelda Williams is going to direct a... Diablo Cody's like, oh, that's awesome. But then I see it, it's like, this is somehow so much better (laughs) than I ever thought it would be. So I'm I'm very excited to see uh, what else she does. And I'm hoping that uh, she makes more wild, fun, and silly stuff um, and isn't immediately put into director jail after (laughs) after this. And before I saw the trailer, I guess I didn't know. I was like, oh, I didn't know you were like a a, a freaky horror funny person, a little interesting person, Zelda. I know you're a little little dork. Um, (laughs) Yeah. But, uh, yep, this movie's great. Check it out. It's awesome. Um, the next movie on this list, oh boy, uh, talk about a little wacky. <laughs> talk about ladies who give her misunderstood, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Madam Web, the latest, uh, movie in the Sony, it used to be the Marvel Universe Sony characters or some it's, bullshit. It's, it's like the Sony universe of Marvel, Marvel characters. characters. So spunk. Great. That's how we say it. We have the latest Spunk one. Spunk Nation, rise up. Am I right, guys? <laughs> Madam Web, uh, starring Dakota Johnson, Sydney Sweeney, uh, Adam Scoot. Um, yeah. Um, so Madam Web, Spider-Man character, uh, a pretty important Spider-Man character, uh, you know, as, uh, as in a wheelchair and is blind. Not in a this A thousand world. years a old. A thousand years old. Dakota Johnson is here uh, as this character. Um, and I think it's, uh, I mean, why are we dancing around? This movie's, is a fucking awesome. joke. Awesome. <laughs> this movie's great. This movie's fantastic, but, you know, it's been run down to the, it is a 
fascinating movie. <laughs> yes. A fascinating movie that like people worked on and edited together <laughs> and put out into the world and marketed and we paid money to watch it. In, in, in a world where one of the biggest studios is is deleting movies because yeah. they're like, this won't make money. It's even more incredible that a bad of web is put out into the world. Sony was like, nope, put it out. Yeah. <laughs> the people need to see this. I saw that uh, they did a screener for some Sony PlayStation employees. And again, I think that's fucking hilarious. Like... Everybody, come to the gathering where we're going to show you Madam Web. You're welcome. Um, it's like, well, I guess I'm not doing anything that evening. Yeah. Where do we start with this one? Um, the thing that is fascinating to me, uh, and I kind of alluded to this in my letterbox review, is that movies are hard to make. And sometimes you just got to put a thing out. You just got to finish it. And I mean that is in that there are editing decisions in this movie that it's clear. I don't know what happened. Uh, specifically, uh, there is the ADR. so much ADR <laughs> in this movie where a character, like, they're not even pretending. It's like, like a dubbed anime. Like, they're not yeah. even pretending that they are the, the saying. The notes are not adding up no, at no. all. And I don't understand how, like, we're like, let's just, just, just put it out. Um, Did he have, like, it, it reminds me a little bit of like the the first Bane voice from like the first trailers where like he was even more like whatever. He was yeah, more, they like, changed it at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like that's fine because like his character's always wearing a mask. So like, did he have like a thick Peruvian accent or something? I don't and know. Maybe like, no, this isn't this. working out, guys. Yeah. Just just talk. Just, like, just oh, okay. Just just put, yeah. <laughs> I, I have a lot of monologues. It's fine. No one will notice, I bet. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that stands out to me a lot, but I don't know. what's Ryan, what's the, your favorite thing about Madam Web that you'll never forget and will we'll carry with you this year, the rest of the year? It's just, like, every, like, everything about this is fascinating from a conceptual level just because, you know, Sony is able to make Spider-Man movies based on seemingly any... Spider-Man related product and yet the decisions they make on what they're going to decide to do are like Venom makes sense you know it's that's Venom, like yeah, okay it's, big, it's Venom it's big, you know yeah. he has his own comics and everything Morbius is bizarre yeah and then it's as boring as well, he's is. a vampire you can do stuff with that you know you can do stuff and like Madam Web <laughs> like just a movie about Madam Web is already like okay it's like a con clairvoyant spider character mm -hmm. but then we have this weird stuff where like there's three other spider women in the movie but they are they never actually become no, the no, spider no, no, women no, no, no. in the they do movie. though we know she can see it she they sees it but like they're not in the movie no, they're no. just those girls. costumes you see it like the no like, yeah and then there's also like the weird like ben uncle ben and peter's mom yeah. stuff which like we never call him Peter though we never they never, never call him say Peter him Peter and they really like to hammer in that his name is Ben yeah <laughs> he's just like hey hey uh Cassie it's me Ben Parker <laughs> it's like you should ask Ben Parker it's like, yeah we know all right and then like having Adam Scott as like him is like but then like having Adam Scott Ed as Ben Parker is fucking wild <laughs> that, that's 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 an inspired choice yeah. I don't care. And then Emma Roberts has Peter's mob for two scenes of a movie? That's insane to me. It's like they clearly had, at some point, this, like, big, like, outline for, we're, like... We're gonna connect it like this. We're gonna connect it like this. But then, like, some other people got in the room and, like, erased stuff off the big board and then added stuff and put stuff back and then it became a mess. And then they're like, oh... Well, that was a pretty fun idea. Maybe we'll circle back to that. So put it in the movie and maybe we'll circle back to it. And then you have this, like, mess of, like, ideas that, like... Hey, guys, we gotta ship a movie. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> like, we, got, we gotta really fill this out. And then it's just it's just fascinating to me. There's three... There's five spider men, essentially, in this movie. Before the existence before, of Spider-Man. Before the existence of, like, the That's singular Spider-Man. So many Spider-People. Why is everyone so hot on spiders? <laughs> I don't know. I do not know. 
And like what another thing that I just admire about this movie. It's like, first off, there a lot of people have been being like, oh, this is worse than Morbius. Like, that's been the, the big thing. It's like, oh, Sony's made somehow the worst movie. And it's like, oh, women, blah, blah, blah. This is not worse than Morbius. No. You no. people do not remember <laughs> Morbius because it was so bad. Or they didn't see it. Or you didn't see it. I just want to hate it. But on you this, guys cause... also didn't see this movie because this also... movie. <laughs> I don't know. There was a Twitter post that just uploaded the whole thing. And I was kind of <laughs> like, I could just watch it. And... <laughs> so maybe, I don't know. That's true. Although there were there were a lot of Twitter posts and like Twitch live streams of Morbius too. That's also so, true. You're right. You're right. Yes. I think the the Twitch Morbius live stream went on for like several. Yeah, it was hours. like for several. <laughs> you could watch it like multiple like times. Yeah. <laughs> it took them a while to get down. It's so good. But like, this movie is insane, and I I have to admire it from that because like from the get go it begins with like magic spider people in Peru. <laughs> who are dressed exactly like Spider-Man, but have, like, magic powers and just appear, and then she's given birth inside a... The water a thing. weird magic thing through the power of a magic spider. And then I'm guessing the evil Spider-Man got his powers from... It was, like, a curse, they said, but did the spider bite him? Or did, did, did just him stealing the spider curse him to have spider-like powers? Oh. It's impossible to know. Exactly. <laughs> Madam Web hits some hits that guy with this car like twice. That was amazing. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> um, Dakota Johnson's delivery is is um, incredible with the whole thing because like she's either actually being funny or the dialogue she's being given is so bad that it her del- that her funny. delivery just makes it funny. I will say this: Dakota Johnson is trying in this movie. <laughs> yes, she is trying. Unlike the press circuit. She doesn't give a fuck. No. But in the movie, she is giving it something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was going to say her all, but she's doing like, a, yeah, the bare minimum of work. <laughs> she is doing way more work than someone should in that kind, yes. of, in that kind of movie. So, like, that's that's why it's a, bad, it's a really bad movie. But that's why I love this movie, because it's so nonsense. And, like, it commits, sort of, to, like, all these insane things. That don't work all the way, and that's just admirable Box in like the best and movie. worst way. Um, Carrie, yeah, you, 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 you are the biggest Marvel fan here. What is your thoughts on this? You've characters? seen this movie. You have not seen Across the Spider Verse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the most entertaining superhero movie I've well, seen is, in folks. several years. Oh. <laughs> it's a masterpiece. I had a great time. They should all be like this. <laughs> all the other ones. Because all the other, they, they all have that, like, fucking self-serious That's blip. true. But That's this true. one was at least hilarious. Yes. Uh, Marvel movies are like, oh, point. Oh, no, that happened. And then it's like, but then it's just boring. And I don't yeah. give a fuck. And it's just like, let me be smarmy over here. And I'm like, I hate you. Shut Except up. someone <laughs> being very confused about how to write that. And he's like... There's a guy who is confused for being... He thinks he's in the wrong train and he asks Madam Web, am I on the right train now? And he's like, I don't know. No? <laughs> That's it. That's the scene. That's it. Yeah, that was a great movie. The part, the part at the baby shower where she's like, oh, no, yeah, my mom died in childbirth, actually, motioning to the pregnant woman. Oh, my God. It's This movie's great. <laughs> that part, I was trying to think of all of my favorite bits from her. The part where she's having the vision, like, learning all of her own lore and what happened to her mm. mom. And the, the, the guy is like, you had a genetic something disease Mus- when you were you oh, had a right. de- muscular yes, yes. disability disease and she's like but i don't have a muscular <laughs> disability disease like, yeah, that, she, was, that, she, was, yeah. that was great yeah it's like oh, hilarious movie. just like again no respect for the audience at all this movie is like just <laughs> but wait a minute <laughs> i don't have that <laughs> Uh, and then it just ends in the most nonsense way. Like, it's just like, what? Like, okay, it isn't, Dakota Johnson is trying up until that ending. Sure. Where she's just like, fucking, who gives a shit, man? I'm blind. I'm in a wheelchair. I got spider powers. Whatever. Who cares? How do you, how... Which is the pitch of Madam Web, but at once you got How do you make a Madam Web... In a, in a, Spoilers, Man Web. Sorry. In, in, in a world where in a world where this movie was widely 
loved and made buddy to to war to Madam Web 2. How do you make a sequel where she is blind and stuck in a wheelchair the whole time? You could have as a poor character, which is what Madam Web is. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, she'd just be like Doctor Strange. Exactly, walk yeah. house and you'd walk up and be like, hey, we need we, your web. We need your web. And you'd be like, she's ha, like, ha. She's like, I knew you were going to come in here. And he's like, here she goes. <laughs> it's like, wow, I'm already tired of this bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I'm yeah, a uh, masterpiece. <laughs> I'm also fast. I was thinking about this because like, because uh, like, like they, they got Sydney Sweeney on this who's like, the it like hot girl. She is a very she is popular the it, lady. She's the right it now. hot girl right now. Excited for her nun movie. Yeah. Oh yes, and like it's fascinating. That, like you have this person as like a spider character, who all have like these tight like suits, and then like she's not in the movie. Like wouldn't that sell tickets if like? If, I mean, if you want to be that if, cynical, if, if, sure. If, if the, if, it's Sony. I get it. You're it's you're Sony. like, why weren't you cynical enough? Like, exactly. Well, I mean, she's dressed up like a submissive teenage girl. She is. People that is. We're supposed to believe she's a teenager. <laughs> supposed to all, all of those fucking girls are... freakish fans would be a... <laughs> would love that. So. It's just it's just like fascinating to me. Would like, especially because like that era of like comic book suit that like her character is based off of is like when they were like the horrors. yeah it was the 90s it was the 90s yeah so like that's the thing is like you guys it's, it's it, i don't get it like if you're gonna if you're gonna go in there you might as well jump all the way in and have your sleazy yeah hot movie with babes i would have preferred i think like a lot of people said like this is like a 2000s era marvel movie it feels like like the daredevil the electros and I agree, but I, I kind of prefer... I wish it had more 2000s flavor. They don't commit to it. Like, there's a Beyonce poster, but there's no crazy in love in the movie. <laughs> They're listening to songs that are from the 90s and 80s more than they are of the of the, of the time. That is... That's part of the theory that it was filmed to yeah, originally right, right. be set in the 90s, and they cha- changed it to the 2000s. They do listen to Toxic, though. They do. That's that a radio big... DJ is like, this song is about to blow up. It's like, <laughs> I see. Yeah. Is it? And that's... I as if like Toxic didn't immediately become the <laughs> biggest song in the world when it came no, no, no. out. That, that DJ was totally ahead of Fucking it. fuck <laughs> off, bro. I've seen that music and video. That's, <laughs> that's the only 2000s like song in the movie. So it's like they already had the rights to all the other 90s songs. Like, fuck, uh, Toxic's good. <laughs> we just need the rights to that one. The rest of them are fine. Anyways, let's move on. Matter let's Web. all just dance on the... Who does that? They're crazy teenage girls. Yeah, but like, just what, what wait staff would allow that to happen? I like, mean, I don't girls, know. I know you're all hot and like 16 or whatever, <laughs> and definitely not 28, but <laughs> please don't dance on there. Well, that's Madam Web. Uh, better than Argyle. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah. Made more money much, than Argyle. Much better than Argyle. Um, tonal shift here. The next movie that we're talking about is How to Have Sex. Which was a very uh, smaller indie movie being distributed by Mubi. They had uh, mm-hmm. Alamo had a quick a big run with it as one of the recommends. So, yeah, but I, I was the only one in that. This. I was the only one in that theater, and I saw someone else tweet about this movie. Like, I was the only one in that theater. Am I the only one who saw How to Have Sex? Mm-hmm. I wanted to see this, but I ended up okay. uh, not obviously so yeah so this movie uh follows a, a group of three british uh not british i don't know where in the uk but they are extremely european or british uh, yeah. apologies <laughs> uh, they love chips these girls they can't get enough of them chips oh, and by God, chips i mean I french fries no <laughs> no <laughs> that's a lot of culture shock for ryan yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna start getting so it's basically gonna tell me some people pronounce z as z i'm gonna absolutely <laughs> lose that'd it that'd be crazy <laughs> so essentially they are on their spring break or at least a break after essentially taking like their college uh, entrance exams mm-hmm. so now they're gonna the kick back and uh, sort of uh, wait until they get the results and have uh, one big party because regardless this is, the, this is the last like year together before they go out to college um, and there's no party in her sex in college as we exactly know. and so they spend a lot of time uh, so yeah they, they're essentially going on a bender um, and we have a, our lead character here who is a virgin uh, and all the, her friends give her shit about it and they're like you're gonna get laid this trip blah 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 um and then, uh, you know, stuff happens. It's uh, not super fun, but it's also not as big of a bummer as I thought this movie would be, which is good. It's good to know. I was expecting, 
Showgirls uh, oh, scene oh, with, which is, <laughs> when I think of the word rape, I think of that scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is awful. But no, that doesn't go that bad. I mean, it's not a good time for our main character here. But if you were wondering, listener, I this movie seems good. I'm sure it's good. But those vibes seem not great. It seemed like it would ruin my day. And so maybe not. And it is a bummer, but it's uh, it's it's not horrible. But uh, yeah, so uh, like I said, so this is a movie. This is a, I guess coming of age movie but not really i don't know coming of age is if something traumatic happened to you and then oh you no. know again it's not that bad but it's not good folks i sorry um <laughs> so yeah i mean the movie is what it says on the box like it is like character like young woman in this situation a lot of alcohol uh has sex he does have sex at the end of this movie it's not ideal um it's weird um and that is the movie. There are some great visuals. Uh, I think the lead actress is fantastic. Uh, uh, I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> it is a movie about a, about a young woman who is should not be drinking that much and should not be hanging out with these p- people and is in danger of being taken advantage of. Um, and then uh, you learn some life lessons and then move on with your life. Uh, but it's, uh, I recommend it. If all of that sounds good, and if my content warning being like, it's not as bad as you think it is, it's still not <laughs> but, but, great. But the stuff is there. It is there, but it's not that bad. Not day ruiningly. It's it. not you, day ruiningly haunting. Yes, <laughs> you've probably seen more explicit on Euphoria. There you go. You've seen worse on Euphoria. That's what I'll say. So this is like you. This is like British Euphoria, except not as bad. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. No one is. Fucking, I don't even know what's something to do. You snort cocaine out of someone's asshole and then, uh, like, unwillingly or something like Wa- that? Watching their dad have sex yeah. with, like, watching videos of your dad have sex with, like, transgender teens and, and, like, be like, Dad, why are you doing that? That's weird. I watched so many tapes of yeah, you doing yeah. that. You're weird. What? It's like, you watched multiple of those tapes. What? Your so dad, at this you're... point. You are just as weird. Zendaya, your smoky eye is incredible. And then it was like, that's what that soundtrack goes. That's Euphoria, folks. Anyways. God, can't wait for it to come back. Yeah. What the hell? Anyways. That show sucks. It sounds like it. <laughs> imagine, imagine a bad thing. Okay. It, it, it has happened in that that's show. That's true. A bad thing that could happen to a young person. It is oh, happening. Yes, that. that is all happened in that show. And it's all Whoa. shot very beautifully, but also a little like someone is like suffering pornography. Like they really love oh, yeah. shooting it, this. It, it's shot in a way where it's like, isn't this awesome? This guy beating up his girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, so oh, it's not, yeah. So there you go, listener. It's we not want as, it to a different rate there. It's not as bad as Euphoria. So there you go. Nice. Anyways, again, tunnel shift, the taste of things. Uh, Julia Binoche is the only actor, actor I know in this movie. Same. Um, yes, we have a, a movie uh, about uh, two French cooks, uh, I guess chefs. And, yeah, it, the, I was very confused, like, what his deal is? Yeah, I don't know. I was like... It's like he's making the menus and stuff. Yeah, like, so he's job, a chef, obviously, sir? but you're not doing the work. Is she, like, a sous chef? I don't... Yeah, I don't know. They didn't seem to have a restaurant or... I don't know. What it's the very strange. So, yes, they're... They just make food. Yeah, yeah. They, it, their job seems to be uh, vibing with each other exactly. at this big house. <laughs> yeah, Benoit Magamel. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. No, Benoit Blanc. Ben, Benoit Blanc. Benoit, Benoit here and... I didn't see this. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying. I'm just derailing. Yeah, yeah. Benoit and Juliet work together uh, at this farm, mm-hmm. this ranch. It's a yeah. ranch. Let's say that. Um, and Benoit is uh, clearly a very good chef, but he's mainly more of a, a menu maker. Uh, like he sort of like here's the vision, he's and the it, ideas man. he's the ideas guy. Oh. And then Juliet brings it to life, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, this just extravagant uh not even extravagant just extremely well made yeah, very, dishes very meticulous meticulous dishes um and they've been working together for years and there's always been this this tent this like uh, romantic like sort of tension uh but none of them have ever acted on it and we are reaching the point in the movie where they're finally like like yeah like let me marry you. i want to marry you so mm-hmm. bad come on please please 
Uh, Puff pastry tonight, my queen. Um, <laughs> so, yes. Um, so it is a movie about two people, like, uh, showing their love for each other through food and the way they cook uh, and stuff, such. Um, and then stuff happens, and then the movie goes on from there. But the, the big hook is that this is a, rom- a romance movie about food also. So you're going to get... The rom- you're going to get some people, really pretty people, longingly looking at each other and talking French, speaking French, and just being like, oh, blah, 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 you know, what is that? Um, and also there's a lot of food. There is so much just uninterrupted cooking in this <laughs> just movie. literally step just by step cooking. you watching them preparing the entire dish. It's like, wow. It's awesome. It's like less less editing on this cooking than in like a cooking yes, show. Yes, a hundred, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, and yeah, I mean this. Uh, it the mission statement is executed brilliantly. Uh, it is Juliet Binoche. She's wonderful. Mm-hmm. She's great. Maybe I'll finally watch. She's in Phantom Thread, right? No. No. Okay. Who is the lady in Phantom Thread? There's uh, Vicky Krebs is the main lady, and oh, okay. then something man's Leslie Mansfield is uh, Reynolds. Well, sister. I should watch more Julia Binoche. Is what I'm saying. She, uh, yeah. she is very good in the Clouds of Sills, Maria. Oh. Um. But yeah, I think uh, it really much. It really is also like a movie about a guy just cannot believe how incredible Julia Binoche is. Right. That's the big relatable. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the, their chemistry is wonderful, and the cooking is great. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to tell you. Like everything that this movie sets out to be, which is a movie about love and heartbreak and a love of food mm-hmm. and a love of just like. The beautiful countryside. <laughs> um, it 100% delivers. Um, so it is a feel good. Well, it's a it's it's a movie that'll make you feel things, and you know, it. Uh, I enjoyed what I felt throughout it. Yes. One of them was hunger. Well, not really. I like most of the dishes. Like I respect. I'm sure this tastes good, but I've never tasted it. Yeah, so some um, weird, they make some weird. Ass they make shit. some weird. I don't shit. think. I don't think you would even no. want to look at any of the dishes they prepared yeah. in this movie, right? I was thinking about you. I was like, Ryan would not eat here. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that milky like, fish thing they was. They made a fucking stingray. Yeah. They, like cooked a stingray, and they had a dish that was shaped like a stingray. Yes. Yeah. They cook stingray enough that they have a specific yeah, dish yeah, yeah. to cook it in this fucking I weird know, creamy milk I sauce. Listen, I, I, I think I know it's part of like you know my poor Midwestern upbringing and also laziness. Majority of laziness, but like. What happened to a good old chicken tender? <laughs> why can't why can't there be a romance movie where someone makes someone Just chicken breading tenders? a chicken? Yeah, yeah, no sauce. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm sure a Michael Sarah movie about something like that yes! is coming down the works right now. Yes. <laughs> mm, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else to say about it. Um, it's another one of those movies where it, like what it's advertised is is what it is. Mm-hmm. It's very <laughs> they good. They taste some things. They, they do, do taste, taste some things. things. <laughs> it's very good. Not anything that I would probably... That one, there was that the one... The puff, the pastry with... That looked really that good. That looked really good. There was the one that he made for her that looked like a weird salad with like flowers with the little, and yeah, stuff yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah. And like the green sauce. That looked amazing. Yeah, I would yeah, have yeah. That. It was like a sort of like a fried shell or something. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. That looked good. Fancy stuff. Also, Baked Alaska, I had no idea what Baked Alaska was until that movie. I didn't even know it was a dessert. I, I, yeah, I knew. I, I didn't <laughs> know. It's not a fish? No. It is, it what? Is a dessert. I knew. I only know that it's. I only know what Baked Alaska is because of the part in Scrooge where he goes to the restaurant with the guy and uh, he starts having a psychotic break and he sees. Uh, he thinks he sees a guy over uh, across the restaurant on fire, but it's just someone getting a baked Alaska prepared oh. for them. And the waiter go, he's like, Bill Murray's just like, uh, uh, and the waiter's like, oh no, that's a baked Alaska, sir. That's a dessert. You wouldn't want that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's why I know mm-hmm. what baked Alaska is. Yeah, so, great movie. Taste of Things. Gourmet. Very good. Check it out. Uh, stop motion. This is a movie I don't know much about. I saw it was playing on Alamo, and I was like, "Huh, I don't know what the hell that is." But I assume it has something to do with the art of stop motion. Uh, you know, a little creature creation. It's a little spooky. It's a little, it's a little spooky. Uh, yeah, this movie is about our main character, whose name is Ella, 
and she is working with her mother on this stop motion film and it's her mother's like passion project and her mom is aging and she has like arth- arthritic issues with her hands mm, so she can't quite do it so she's like mentoring her daughter and getting her to help her finish the movie and our main character is feeling stressed by this and she wants to pursue her own projects but she feels trapped with her mother but then her mother winds up in the hospital so then she wants to continue the mm-hmm, movie for mm-hmm, her mother mm-hmm. but then she starts having these odd intrusive thoughts she moves into this new workspace and there's a little girl there who comes in and is like i think you should make a different movie because this one's boring and stupid <laughs> and, uh, so then she just sort of starts losing touch with reality and getting lost in the sauce of making a completely different stop motion movie where the one that her mom was making was about a cyclops who uh trades well not a cyclops originally it becomes a cyclops because they trade one of their eyes to the gods to see their destiny but then they just find themselves they see themselves dead so mm, that was that the, is destiny yeah <laughs> so that well, was a the, very predictable that one. was the movie the mom was making but then the when the little girl comes in she starts telling our main character this story about the ash man and there's a little girl who goes through the the forest and uh it's like the first night the ash man comes he sees you and then so as our main character builds this relationship with this little girl the little girl tells her more of the story she starts making the movie and then she starts kind of going a little crazy losing time and more of the movie gets made but she isn't like as conscious of making it she has all these strange stop motion nightmares Mm. and her boyfriend and her boyfriend's sister are like what's going on and she's like i'm fine but it's really good i really liked it a lot this makes me think of censor for some reason it did make me think of censor as well reality losing yeah losing touch with reality because you're kind of getting lost in your work and Mm -hmm. letting it infect your brain and the main girl kind of looks like the girl from Sensor oh, too, yeah. so that made me think of it as well. But yeah, it's definitely Sensor vibes. I, I agree I would, with that. I wanted to see this, but uh, my month has been uh, very distracting with uh, Persona Three, um, unfortunately. Video that game. does look like the lady from Sensor. Yeah, they look very similar. Apparently, she was in the Nightingale. Oh, now that's a bummer of a movie. Now that's a day ruining, <laughs> devastating fucking movie. I. I didn't hate that movie. That movie's really good, but I also hated that movie. Fuck that movie. That's an unpleasant movie. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, the new movie by the Babadook lady. Yeah, let me go ahead and watch that. Oh, it's got Sam Claflin in it. Yay. Oh, wow. Oh. I hate I want to die. <laughs> oh, wow. We're leading with this. <laughs> so this is coming to Shudder, though, mm-hmm. right? Okay. That's exciting. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I'd recommend checking it out. It's fun. Yeah, it looks really high on that. Yeah, okay, I, that sounds awesome. No idea how I had no goddamn clue about this. Yeah, until... I had heard like rumblings about it, and then Greg saw the trailer, and Greg texted me and was like, "We should watch this because it comes out on Shutter soon." And then I found out that it was playing at Alamo, so that's how okay. that transpired. <laughs> I will watch that. It's fun. Cool. Drive Away Dolls is the last movie we watched in February, uh, directed by Ethan Cohen, starring Margaret Qualley. Uh, and oh boy, Geraldine Viswathan, Viswathan. Oh my Geraldine? god, Geraldine, Geraldine, Geraldine. That's how you. Speak. Apologies, That's Geraldine. How... Geraldine. Uh, and also have a Benny Fieldstein, uh, Petra Pascal, Matt Damon, uh, and Coleman Domingo. Um, yeah, we have a, our we have a, our two ladies here uh, who are lesbian. That's a big thing in the movie. Uh, this takes place. It's not current time, is it? No, it's Didn't like... I, they don't have cell phones. Yeah. It's like... Oh, man, like probably 90s, maybe. Older than that. 80s, 90s, 80s. I have no idea. Later Anyways, <laughs> Margaret Qualley plays a dirtbag, uh, and she's best friends with uh, with Geraldine, uh, and they're like, let's go to Florida. Let's get the fuck out of it's, here. It's the classic, like, oh, I'm the crazy friend, and I play by the rules. Exactly. And I'm the... T- uptight friend who yeah. who doesn't want to not play mm-hmm. by the but what if we kiss <laughs> exactly. mm. and they are going to tallahassee florida they pick up a rental car like oh tallahassee and they're like all right here we go what was that guy's name 
You remember the, the, the gentleman who gave them Curly. the... Curly. Curly. His name is Curly. He, he was hilarious. I, like, don't call me that. I don't know you like it's that. too familiar. Too familiar. Like, okay. It does take place in 1999. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. So they go over there, and then Coleman Domingo comes up, and he's all like, I'm here for the Tallahassee car. He's like, wait a minute, what? Those two <laughs> ladies just left. Two the... broads come in looking to go to Tallahassee. Is that wrong? <laughs> yes, and there is, we know that there is a there is a there is some sort of suitcase uh, that is in the trunk of the car, and they really want that uh, suitcase, and so shenanigans ensue. Um, this is a funny and weird movie. Mm-hmm. Um, weird as in it's a uh, offbeat. Yes. <laughs> uh, and not what I expect. Also at the end, or what anyone would expect at the end. Um, it's also like they don't really. What's weird about this movie is they don't really discover the suitcase for like a really while. long time. <laughs> for a you it's think like it's like you would, yeah, you would think it's Act One, but no, they don't. Discover. They're just getting into mayhem by themselves. Yes, yes, hundred percent. It's not the two people that are chasing them and are causing them trouble. Yeah, it's each other. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a, a sort of a, a raunchy like a uh, road trip movie. I guess you'd describe it as. Um, throwbacky kind of feel. I can't. I can't think of like movies like this on top of my head, but like, it feels like a movie where there's been like a lot of this kind of thing. Certainly, there have been movies about. Oh, oh, we got something in the car that we did not uh, expect, and now they're chasing after us. Whoopsie. Um, but yeah, it, it on paper very much sounds like a Cohen uh, setup for a movie uh, about criminals and then stuff going wrong. Um, but yeah, this is a it is just a it is just a raunchy comedy where they're where uh, uh, Gwendolyn and Mark Qualley are lesbians and they get up to lesbian antics and <laughs> funny funny stuff. I don't know, uh, Carrie, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I liked this movie a lot. I thought it was hilarious and I thought it was also kind of sweet a lot of the time and I really liked the dynamic of the friends and I liked the dynamic of the <laughs> the two the two guys who were chasing them. I thought they were so funny. They're just being driven insane by lack of sleep. Mm-hmm. And I love Coleman Domingo. I love him and I was happy to see him in this. Because the last thing I saw him in was uh, The Color Purple, and he was very evil in that movie. <laughs> so it's hard to enjoy his performance when he's the worst man ever. But, yeah, I liked Driveway Dolls a lot, mm-hmm. and I think it was very funny. And I am a Coen Brothers enjoyer, so this felt like a fun throwback to some of the, like, Raising Arizona-ish, quirky, wacky stuff that they used to get up to mm-hmm. yeah ryan i like i i, I enjoyed this quite a lot too i love margaret qualley's performance my one thing that voice is something that voice is something <laughs> or whatever the hell mm-hmm. or, um my one thing is you know it's it's very big on the lesbian stuff and there's a lot of like sex stuff and like there's just a lot of it there is and a lot it's, of it. And like, it's a big I just, thing. It's, it's a key a big, part of the it's story. It's a key part of the story. And just like that being like filmed and directed from like, it felt very male perspective-y to me. Um, and you know, it was written by Ethan Cohen. And I and I know his wife also co-wrote it too, but like, I don't know. I just felt the whole time is like, I don't know. Something about this is just is not... Uh, vibe? Not vibing with me. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't help that like there's just like a lot of it throughout all mm-hmm. of it, and like a lot of times it's like very funny, especially like some of the third act stuff where they, you know, have the suitcase and all the silly mm-hmm, stuff they mm-hmm, get into mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with that. But I don't know, just like that's the thing that was like like kind of kept this from me from being like too like. Mm. But it's like short, sweet. Um, it is very all, short. All, all the all the ladies <laughs> are great and funny. Hour and twenty minutes. Uh, yeah. Some. Some crazy appearances by actors you would not expect, and the reasons that are there are equally insane. Um, and it's it's just fun and enjoyable. I don't yeah, know. I, it's uh, sad that this movie is not doing well, but also I don't feel like Focus pushed it at all. Like, no. It seemed like they were doing a push when they were originally going to release it, and then they paused it for the strike, and then they're like, they just released they it. They just released it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's weird. Yeah. Uh, 
So uh, yeah, but eventually watch Drive Away Dolls. Uh, it's a, it's not it's another one of those movies where like, um, it's not a, a it's not the typical fun just like wacky hijinks sex movie that you get often that a lot of people are like oh, I wish we had more movies like that. It's a little weird. Uh, like I said, it's got some actors that just appear like is that that's that for okay weird whatever well, moving on. Um, but yeah, Drive Away Dolls pretty all right. It's fun. That's my big takeaway. Fun it's a fun film. <laughs> Have fun. Uh, that's February. Uh, the month of Argyle. Uh, the month of... Ma oh, no, Madam Web. Sorry. The month of Madam Web. Uh, March. Uh, we got some stuff here. Doom Part 2, baby. Doom Nation, rise up. We're back, baby. Woo. Uh -huh. This is a Coming movie from we... the podcast of people who are like, yeah, Dune's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we've all seen Dune. Uh, I'm sure I'll, ha I'll remember stuff to say about Dune uh, when we record March. Um, but yeah, uh, I, we're all of we're all of us coming out of Dune one when it came out in 2021. We're all of us like that was all right, or did, did you really like it, Carrie? I don't know. Uh, you I saw think... an IMAX, I remember. Yeah, I thought it was all right. I didn't like. It wasn't over the moon, but I liked it more than I thought I was going to like it. Because mm -hmm. I'm not really a lore-dense sci-fi yeah. kind of gal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, that's something that like I feel like I would like, but every time I see one of those, I'm like, why does... I wish this connected with me. Because for me, after Doom 1, I was like, I feel like I would like this, but it clearly is just like cut in the middle of a book. Mm -hmm. um, and the way it ends is just like, and the venture's gonna continue. So like, okay, I wanna know how I really feel about this until I see the next one. Um, and I've seen the next one, and they edit it again with like, oh, it's some other crazy stuff. It's, yeah. like, it's like, I feel, none of this feels like it's <laughs> ending. Yeah. To watch David Lynch's Dune, which actually is a decisive ending, which I, is I, weird. I wanna rewatch David Lynch's Dune now. It's a I, weird ending. Now that I understand like a solid like go through of Dune, I feel like I can watch a David Lynch interpretation of Dune now. Because uh, that movie was nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> Mega Mind versus the Doom Syndicate. I never watched Mega Mind. Oh, I like Mega Mind. I watched it semi recently. Not that's maybe wild. Maybe like the last seven ish years, but I think it's okay. I remember liking Mega Mind. It's got Tina Fey. It's got Brad Pitt. You know, he's got a big head. That's fun. Mm -hmm. There's a Peacock sequel coming at you. Mm -hmm. I've heard, uh, not good, this is uh -oh. what I heard. <laughs> uh -oh. Even though the resurgence of Mega Mind with uh, the youth. The memes. The memes, yes. Uh, Problemista's finally coming out. Um, this was delayed from the strikes too? Mm -hmm. I guess. I assume that's the reason mm -hmm. why. It was like being marketed and then it's like, hold on. But now Alamo is pushing it for uh, International Women's Month. And they're celebrating Women's Month by having a bunch of Tilda Swin ah, movies. And I'm like, that's the angle, and I love ah, it. <laughs> that's the angle. Because okay. I noticed, <laughs> I was trolling, and I noticed all the all the Tilda Swinton showings a few weeks ago. And I was like, we've got a plan. That reminds here. me, I'm going to get tickets uh, for Michael Clayton. I've seen mm -hmm. in the their emails, they're called like the many faces of Tilda Swinton. Mm -hmm. And it's like, she does have a lot of faces. And, and they're and, all perfect. And, and it's all mostly just Specifically in Suspiria. In Suspiria, yeah. yeah. Just in Suspiria. She has a lot of different faces in that movie. I had no idea she was a therapist in that movie for the longest part. Which <laughs> is wild. Uh, imaginary. Not to, not to be confused with If. Yeah. God. This, yeah, because this one actually looks out good. Before I see If. My God. Yeah, that, no. Oh. Imaginary it looks amazing. It it does it? Looks, it looks silly. George! George, uh, what about the part? Uh, what about the part in the trailer where she's like, "Maybe we shouldn't play together anymore, Chauncey. Maybe we shouldn't be friends." <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I'll be seated day one. Yeah. You guys can come if you want. No, I'll, I'll see. This looks. This looks like a fun day one. I'm full, so full excited. Sure, I'll watch so it. It's, it's so weird. It's creepy teddy bear, and he's gonna be a big monster. It looks mm. like. Foster's home, but evil. <laughs> <Spooky>. <laughs> Fucking if just looks like regular Foster's home. How yeah, did it looks like dog ass. Yeah. I'm not going to watch how, that. How, <laughs> and like, my problem with that is like, I saw John, she was like, I just had this great idea about imaginary friends, but after, it's like, Bitch. That, that show came out 20 years ago. How do <laughs> people know it was, about it? It was very popular. How do people <laughs> not know? Jesus Christ. Anyways, um... 
Spaceman. What's this? I don't know what this is. This is a Netflix um, movie with Adam Sandler and Paul Dano. Oh, yeah. Oh, Paul yes. Paul Dano's little alien. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know much about it. I don't think it got good reviews. Probably but not. <laughs> I, I saw a letterbox. What's your four favorite And movies? Carrie Mulligan. Huh. Yes. <laughs> I saw a letterbox, um, like, four favorite movies mm-hmm. with Paul Dano and Adam Sandler, and Paul Dano said Punch Drunk Love, and, oh, Adam, yeah, and yeah. Adam Sandler, like, almost started crying. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so, so that, that's, that's the main reason sweet. why I remember about that. Mm-mm-mm. Well, Godspeed, Paul. Kung Fu Panda 4. Also never seen a Kung Fu Panda movie. Really good. Oh, never no, seen. yeah, we talked about this. Yeah. yeah. I stuff, fun. I, yeah. I just never, like... Cause like I like the Shrek movies, but like the DreamWorks stuff never. You don't like it. ants. I never <sighs> saw ants. Flushed away. No one saw ants or flushed away. Well, so let me introduce you to our friend Greg, cause he loves ants. Oh wow! <laughs> Why does he love ants? I don't fucking you know. You have ant. to talk to him. <laughs> Because Bugs Life is shit, apparently. <laughs> and Ants is awesome. One <laughs> what of what my first, like, toys I remember was, like, a toy of, like, the grasshopper villain from the Bugs Life. I, was gonna, I thought you were going to say Ants for a second. No, I was going to jump in your ass. So I was just, and, like, I think I was like, why was one of my first toys grasshopper. ever... That was like the villain, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. yes. They're, they're why like, did why was that one of my first toys? I, yeah, why are you asking me? I don't know. <laughs> it's your mother. <laughs> Anyways, Kung Fu Panda Four. I'm sure this will be fine. As I understand the Kung Fu Man's movies, I didn't watch any after two. I like two a lot. As I understand, they they were like yeah, they kept making them and they're fine. Mm-hmm. So, Godspeed, sure Kung, Jack Black. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Love lies bleeding. Yes. Uh, yes. Great director, director of uh, Saint Maud, Kristen Stewart. Great. I've been, I've been, wa- I've been wanting more like good crime thrillers. That's something I want more of. And this looks pretty fun. This looks like the version of Drive Away Dolls that Ryan will like. This is a serious <laughs> movie about lesbians we, and we, yeah. No goofs, no I gags. I want artsy fartsy sad lesbians. Okay. Yes, <laughs> that's the best genre. <laughs> Um, but I agree, this movie looks amazing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's got a... It's had a long... I, I Maybe it's because I keep seeing stuff for it on my timeline. But I was like... It's, it's, a, it's to the point where, like, it's getting a little too oversaturated for me. And then I... I think A24 is pushing this real hard. Yeah. Because, uh... Have they ever... Have they done... A lot of Christian Stewart stuff. I was just before. thinking that. I don't think no, so. I don't think so. I don't so think so. That's they a big. So I think they're. I think they're really pushing that. They know their audience. Yeah, exactly. They know. <laughs> they know like, would the gays find out about this movie? And I don't know how Problemista is gonna do. Um, yeah, I don't know. I wonder how things are doing at A two four. Mainly because uh, in the the nightmare capitalist <laughs> world we live in, it's like. You gotta keep going up, and so you have like the uppest with everything everywhere all at once, and now it's been like. Fine They're movies, for their next yeah, but they haven't had like a big. I mean, I guess maybe it's Civil War, but maybe that's the it one that's yeah. uh, probably Civil War. I think actually. A lot of people really liked uh, Iron Claw. I think that one. But not enough people. Not watched. enough people. Yeah. But not I enough. feel like that they, was big. They, they're looking for their next like Oscar winner thing because like, do they have something that's nominated for Best Picture this year? Hell no, I don't think so. I think that's the first. Oh one. wait, no Zone, but they're oh, distributing yeah. Zone. It's not like they're that involved with it. Oh right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we for, talked about this for, last time on last episode. We talked about the zone. I was like, there's been no marketing for this. I started seeing ads for the zone of interest, and they're weird because they just begin like, I think that's a different. I think I think some. It is. I think a trailer editor is like is like working on both sides, and I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I mean, A24's big thing is like merch and stuff, and yeah, you're not exactly true. gonna buy a Zone of Interest hat. <laughs> some boots. Like, this is just a regular Nazi hat. Why would they sell this? <laughs> this is this is authentic <laughs> Nazi memorabilia. I think, I think they did some poster prints or something of like the the, that's, one with the flower. That's but... the only yeah. thing they can sell. <laughs> But yeah, it is uh, it is already streaming. Also, uh, I assume because it had like a very small theatrical run, and it's a right. nominated movie, so they're like just put it streaming so people right. can actually watch it. Um, Great movie. Anyways, uh, Roadhouse. Uh, the Roadhouse reboot's coming out in March. I think so. 
That's what the list said. Yeah. That'd be wrong. Yeah. That's what the list said, George. I, can, I don't, we don't control I was the list. writing this at work today while I was half busy, Thank you, Carrie. So I don't know what was I've going heard on. some, I will not be watching this, but I've heard some weird stuff from the, like, the AI director. stuff, yeah. Uh, well, like, there's also the director what was under the impression that this would get a limited theatrical thing, but Amazon was like, no. And he was apparently really upset by that. Um, but then, like, Jake Gyllenhaal was like, no, I, 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 I was, okay. told this always, I was told this would always be a street. So they're like, some different people had some I mean, different that ideas. that checks out. Different ideas on the movie. So that's that's the thing I read. But then I also read with the AI thing. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Mm. Because it was like during the strike, they, they weren't done with it while the strike was happening. Mm. And they were like, fuck it. We got to fill We got to make, again, we got to ship a movie, as they say. We got to ship a and movie to they, Amazon I mean, Prime. So yeah. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We can't just waste money here for amazon prime Mm-mm-mm. silly guys uh the american society of magical negroes um what's this gentleman's name i forget it uh, uh jurassic oh, park uh tim no no uh, uh dungeons and dragons yes oh i don't know his name but I know he's a smith about. right yes yeah, justice smith, smith. Justice, justice smith, smith. Uh, i like this kid I nice. don't know how I feel about the the setup for this movie. Uh, where I think it, the pitch is fun, but it's like, fun, but it's weird. But it is weird, and seeing like it in trailers and like that title screen is like, hmm. Like seeing like reading that title. is Oh weird yeah, that's me. weird. But it's just like the setup of like the fact that uh, you can't like the whole setup is like it's like over to like make sure the white people don't go too crazy. So like you, you we can't we gotta like we can't keep them we gotta keep them sort of in control. Um, it's a very fine needle to thread, and I yeah. wish them the best of luck. Uh, so good luck, Justice. Um, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Boo. First off, my here's here's my thing. Like, if you think about original Ghostbusters, right? Uh, yeah. Like that's just a dirty, silly comedy movie. Yeah, it gets a blowjob by a ghost. And and now it's like this action yeah, epic that's thing weird. That's, weird. that's like all about like every trailer it has just like scenes from just the first Ghostbusters it's like these are so different <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah. edited like uh, The Force Awakens yeah, yeah. Yes. the gravitas yeah. of, with which we approach these Ghostbusters trailers it's really crazy and I don't understand it's like it's like Ghostbusters fans like don't know what that movie is anymore there's like oh remember Ghostbusters yeah it was Star Wars Sure. <laughs> it was not. It was made on like a shoestring budget. What's going on here? It's got Rick Moranis. It does have Rick Moranis in mm-hmm. it. So true. Mm-hmm. I hate this movie. I hate I hate go- I just hate I'm, Ghostbusters now. Damn. I, I like Ghostbusters it. fine. First Ghostbusters is one of my favorite movies. It's say. pretty good. I love that movie. I, I I agree. It's a very good funny movie. I hate it now though. I mean, I just enough, I, I just hate it from like <laughs> I all like this... Ghostbusters too, but I haven't seen Ghostbusters two in a while. Yeah, I've only seen it once, and I saw it. It's got years the ago. goop in it. Yeah, there's purple goo everywhere, Ryan. That is listen. There's a big mean painting, I, Ryan. Vigo the Carpathian. Yeah. <laughs> oh come on. I think <laughs> I think it's just like the the the. The weird fan stuff after the Lady Ghostbusters like made me sure. As in, they won. They essentially won. They essentially won (laughs) over a movie that was just as good as the other Ghostbusters. Well, I don't know about that. Let's calm down. Let's let's calm down. It's fine. It's not inoffensive. It's fine. Sure. (laughs) It's not. It's not one of the best. I just really don't like Paul Feig at all. (laughs) No, that's totally fair. (laughs) That's totally fair. (laughs) I can't remember a single joke from that movie. uh, So I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, but I get it. I don't understand what ice ghost, ice ghost. It's like New York is frozen. It's a wasteland, and also Paul Rudd's here. It's like <laughs> thank why? goodness Paul Rudd's here. <laughs> why is the new Ghostbusters Paul Rudd um a, a mom and two kid and her two kids? <laughs> That's weird. Because they're Egon's grandkids? Question mark. Who cares? Uh, a lot of people, maybe. Oh, I don't know. God. <laughs> Shout out to McKenna Grace. I like her. She plays a yeah the the daughter of Egon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the what McKenna Grace should be doing is reprise a role as the daughter of the Warrens and do a, a spin-off yes. series where you know she's yes, going yes, on. Yes, 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 yes. That's what they should be we doing. We need a new Annabelle movie, is what you're saying. Exactly. <laughs> exactly what I'm saying. 
Uh, anyways, uh, is, are, are you are, are you are you hate watching this? Are we gonna watch it? Is anyone watching? Frozen I don't want to watch this. <laughs> I, I know I'll have I to didn't see, the, see that. I didn't see the. First I have one. to know. I'm gonna probably watch it. I'll, I'll end up having to see it. One of those normal I movies that Joe wants likes yeah, to watch. You go. so, oh my hey. god! You and your normal movie loving wife. <laughs> Can't believe this. Uh, speaking Audience, of audience, I, I, I stood there like if any of them's like uh, I, I object. She likes too many normal <laughs> movies. I know she was my friend first. <laughs> what was it? What was that fourth Men in Black movie? Men in, Na- Men in Black International? International. That's a normal movie. Well, that movie. was the one where she was like, you know what? We should be watching more movies <laughs> like this. It's and I like for- a movie made for everyone. And I forget that movie exists until I go to Ben's Game Zone and I see that. Oh, yeah, they did that. That's weird. All right. Weird. Anyways, speaking of normal movies, Immaculate. <laughs> Which is uh, the as I understand that is this is the, nu- the Sydney Sweeney Nun movie. Yes. I only know it as the Sydney Sweeney Nun movie. It, it is neon though, which has it, me interested. And it also reminds me, I never saw Benedetta. That's a great. Movie. <laughs> you would love that. Movie. That's, that movie's that's, that's a movie. Yeah. That's a movie. <laughs> that movie's insane. I saw Starship Troopers a few months ago. Great movie. I mean, by a few months ago, I mean a few weeks ago. I don't know. I said months. <laughs> A couple of years Back ago, a couple of years ago, I watched Star Trip, Tri- Star Trip Trippers. Just a fun fact. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I hope it's good. I haven't seen if there's any early reviews on it. I mean, the premise is great. I love a spooky nun. Mm-hmm. I sure, Sydney Sweeney's but great. Yeah, why not? Why not? So hopefully, it's good. It's fun. Late night with the devil. I don't know what this is. I'm I'm excited for this, but I don't know a whole lot. I want I want to know as little as possible. Um, from my understanding, it's like a late night show, mm-hmm. like an '80s style Johnny Carson esque era oh. um, late night show, mm-hmm. and like they conjure they conjure a demon. That on sounds yeah, fucking this is like great. A, this is like a ghost watch. Yeah, type, it's a, yeah, 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 it's like a, it's something. an authentic <clears throat> type of ghost watch thing. Um, the actor is great. I can never remember his name. I will never learn that man's name. In but a he's it. Polka he's, Dot Man. <laughs> Polka Dot Man. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's good in every single movie I love he's him. in. He's so funny. He's great. And he's the Johnny Carson type, mm-hmm. and that's that's a great look. This sounds awesome. Yeah, it's gotten like really good reviews, and I'm. And I'm excited. I want to jump in knowing that. Yeah, that's yeah. great. It's, okay, it's that's... gonna be on Shutter eventually, but I think they're playing it at the Alamo. There's I don't think be... the tickets are up yet. But... No, they, it's a, they're said they're gonna do some limited screenings. And nice. Alamo that sounds screen. great. I'm excited. Yeah. Fantastic. I want to go into more of these like, like low budget weird fucking film festival ass horror movie stuff. Knowing nothing. So you're saying you wish you saw Skin and Rink when that knowing anything. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 knowing something wouldn't have helped That's understanding true. it. But I like, still don't know anything. <laughs> the same. But, like, there's that, um, I, I watched the TV Glow movie. I saw the TV Glow, yeah. Uh, oh, I want to go into yeah. that. I want to go into that, that yeah. knowing Looks nothing. amazing. Because that sounds great. That is Justice Smith. Oh. Friend of the podcast, Justice <laughs> Smith. I love him in Jurassic World, yeah. Fallen Kingdom. Detective Pikachu himself. Detective Pikachu himself. Yes, 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 yes. Godzilla X Kong: The New Empire. Folks, I don't give a fuck. I don't think I do either. I did not like Godzilla vs Kong. <laughs> King Kong. I, when I look back on these movies, I cannot remember what happened in any of them. Like, like which thing happened in which movie, yeah. or how many of them there have even been. The only this one would be that I the fourth. <laughs> The only one that I look back on and I'm like, that one rocked is Kong Skull Island. Yeah, that was, so. oh, I guess this would be fair. Yeah. No, it's Godzilla, Kong Skull Island, Godzilla Kingdom of Monsters, Godzilla vs. Kong, and Godzilla so X-Kong, Jesus. The New Empire so is five. And there's also that Monarch show. Yeah, yeah, in this show. So, this is a weird universe that just kind of Then we got a lot of Godzilla yeah. movies, yeah. <laughs> Uh, American ones at least. Um, ones, yeah. I stand by being the one person in this podcast that loves Godzilla King of the Monsters fucking banger movie whatever but i, I do not care about is this. that the one that has that's uh, Ghidorah but, and yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah that one was fun that one had good moments for sure vera formiga in that movie a thing i did not realize until a week ago until i was looking up stuff on the psycho until you sequels your, until you did your weekly search for v- era. <laughs> vera formiga was in bates motel 
Yeah, she was. I had no idea. I was like, oh, hey. That sounds awesome. I should watch that. (laughs) I watched some of that show. I don't remember how far I made it, but yeah, she's she's the mom. I didn't watch it just on the fact that that pitch sounded ridiculous. (laughs) But hey, I don't know. Maybe it's good, so. It was, I remember feeling very uncomfortable watching uh, Charlie Bucket be a fucking weirdo. (laughs) That is Charlie Bucket in that. Yeah, interesting. Well, that's February, folks. Uh, There's no Vera Farmiga in March. Uh, Boo! Boo! (laughs) Um, But uh, isn't Rebecca Hall in the Godzilla movie? Oh, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. So we do love her. Yeah, but well, she, she was in the other one. Shows she was in the last one. Uh, Godzilla is Kong. Yeah, 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 We love her. We love we do her. Lo- we do I love saw her. her we want her screaming and sad. I saw Vicky Cristina Barcelona, which is the Ooh, movie. We don't I... want. We don't want her just like behind a monitor being like, "Oh my god, Godzilla's pissed." I kind of do. Like, <laughs> <laughs> give her a break. Let her relax. Sure. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I need her always at odds with She's episode. like, do I have to learn a? a a <laughs> devastating monologue for this film? No, actually. All right. No, cool. just stare at the screen and be like, oh my god, Godzilla. <laughs> she's oh like, my god. Oh, she's like, oh, easy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's all for that. Um, the next time we talk to you all, it'll be during the best of discussion, folks. Um, uh, I, made, I made a point last year to. To number like well, how many times have we done this? And I have no idea. We've done this podcast for so long, mm-hmm. despite our laws, despite my haters, our haters. <laughs> uh, we still keep doing this podcast, but I can't remember what year. Of the, the it's maybe like the eighth. I think it's nine? eighth. My gut says eighth. eighth. We've yeah. gotten all your letters demanding we stop and we <laughs> refuse. Hell no. <laughs> um. So yeah, look forward to that. Anyways, uh, Ryan, if folks wanted to find your opinions on Megamind versus the Doom Syndicate, <laughs> a movie you're definitely watching. Um, uh, letterboxd.com slash film piece. That is me. Um, I randomly made a post on Blue Sky for the first time oh, today. Oh, I, I forgot I, that existed. <laughs> I, I am slash or at Mr. Pip. I don't know how it works. My post was just that meme of like the guy like standing like... As if, like, he was about to give, like, a hot take. And my take was, Lisa Frankenstein is better than Dune Part 2. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> Let me log into <laughs> this guy and uh, retweet Re- that. Re-sky that or whatever. I so, think it's repost. Repost that. Who knows? I don't know where Blue Sky is. There it is. <laughs> it's a butterfly now. <laughs> it's a butterfly Carrie, now. Carrie, where can folks find you? Uh, not on Blue Sky, apparently. Yeah, no, I dipped. Uh, oh, it needs me to sign in. I'm not doing that. Uh, That's totally <laughs> I'm on Letterboxd at, just by searching my first name, Carrie, K-A-R-R-I-E. Uh, and you can find me at J. Cruz Alvarez 26 um, oh, oh, that guy. That that guy. This guy. Okay. I showed him the, the picture of the guy. He's standing. It's a meme. Uh, well, that's it, folks. Until next time, bye-bye.